Okay. Okay, welcome to my stream, every pony. Um, I'm early, which is a bit strange for my streams. So I'm just gonna hang around for like five minutes or so. In the meantime, I just, oh, that's right, I should check my, uh, whatever my channel is listed as on Twitch, because I always mess that up to the point I have like a uh, screen for that. Nope, that's good. 100% good. Looks like it's streaming. Perfect. Mwah. Okay, so uh, where do I start? Creative Commons music, right? Some say it's not real music. I disagree. But the main problem I've been having is that the authors just change their licenses and it's unclear what the intent is. So, let's go for an example. Uh, in 2012, Kelly Mays released Our Time. Super cool, uh, why are you only give me except that? Okay, whatever. Um, super cool album, great. CC by, um, licensed under a Creative Commons attributed 3.0 unported license. Nice. So head on over to Free Music Archive. Um, let me just load this up on my internet that I'm using to stream. Um, whew. Let's load this up on the web archive instead. Oh no, I hit the button. Okay. You got me. So if we head on over to the archive, you'll see. Close it to that, yeah. So it's like Creative Commons license. Creative permissions beyond the scope of this license may be available. There, so yeah, it's a Creative Commons license by 3.0. So if you click that, it takes you to the Creative Commons page. Believe me, I'm not waiting for my internet to load. So, case closed, right? No, absolutely not. If you head over to Bandcamp, you go to Our Time. What's this? Some rights reserved? Please review, re refer to individual track pages? Okay, sure, let's open up a bunch of random tracks what's this CC by NCND non-commercial non-commercial no derivatives what what's going on there mate and it's like it's not that the artist seems to have a change of mind because she's got a sweet new album here and that's CC by 3.0 but it's like I don't quite understand what's happening. So it's like, should I use that music in a stream? Probably not. Um, so let's go look at Hank. Pretty cool music again. Um, license and more information, you know, attribution 3.0 international license. Sweet. So we go there. Um, but this artist has a band camp. So it seems like a place you'd get better quality. So let's head on over to their band camp. So Acro Benning 91, head there. And it'd be like, no, all rights reserved. Why? Okay, that's weird. Well, there's a whole bunch of free music on Jamando, right? What? Nothing here. I downloaded this like four years ago. The license is gone. It's just gone. You download it and it's like, this album is not available for licensing. Okay, well, maybe it's just that. Um, let's search up 
Oh, it's over here. Um, yeah, so this seems pretty cool. Obtain an official certificate in order to use this track in this album in videos or multimedia projects or personal use MP3 quality. It's like, no mention of license. And I'm calling Jamendo out because the website used to actually give a license on every page. Look at this, get an official license. So I click here and you know what it does? It just searches the album name Fear. It doesn't even give me like an actual link to the band. It's like, I think I ranted about this when they changed the interface. Um, that being the heroes that they are, um, if we go to the web archive, they just don't seem to do any kind of archiving at that website. If we go back to 2014, I know here, 301, redirecting to EN. Okay, let's just wait a little bit. I'm not sure how well it would have archived. So it used to look like this. Um, let's see. I'll just go to more tracks here. That might not even work. I'm not even sure. I don't know if JavaScript was a mistake yet in 2014. We'll have to see. Sorry, it takes longer than expected. Yeah, I'm sure it does. Okay, so what music can I stream? Do I stream the same music? I don't know. But I have downloads of these songs from like 2014. Like they're all licensed in the downloads. It says Creative Commons, share alike, that kind of thing. It's like, should I use that? I have a license for it, but at the same time, if people go to get it, they can't get the license unless I upload it, or maybe the artist is gonna come kneecap me, which is weird, but they also changed the uh, license. So here's Zero Project. I just searched this up because I was like, what is the one artist that I could think of off the top of my head that has music that's streamable and isn't Kevin McLeod. So here's Zero Project, and their website's basically exactly the same as it was, geez, five years ago. And you know what? This thing loads really fast. I don't know how that's possible. It just loads fast. How does this how is this possible? How do we have the technology to load websites fast? Are you getting this? Look, it just loads. Um, so today we're going to be playing Metamorphosis from it. Metamorphosis. Uh, it's a bit misleading because if you click YouTube, it just takes you to a trailer. Um, but you can play each track individually here, which is a little strange. Uh, I'm not sure what kind of player that is. Uh, you can download the album here, which is what I did and extracted it, which kind of a pain. But they recommend using a download manager, and I was like, okay, isn't that what torrents are? You torrent something, and that's the download manager. But apparently not. And then I learned download managers still exist. Wow, it's amazing. Now, uh, I just, I don't understand. In the license, it's like Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 slash 4.0 unported license. But there's no porting for the Attribution 4. There's just international. That's one of the reasons they threw out 4.0, so they didn't have to port the license everywhere. Anyway, that's my trash rant of the day.
play some music and get back to DOS. Where to begin? This music makes it seem like I just started an epic journey, but it's actually like 2.40am and I have water that gives me a headache because I haven't filtered it and I live in a drought, so we'll see how long I can stream. Okay, so let me think, because I've done a lot of stuff off stream. So, the first thing I've done, and was hinted to in last stream, wow, is that a bit loud? That seems a bit loud. Oh, and I didn't put the artist details up there. Um, so what happened was, I was trying to fit this thing in thing into 64k which is difficult so let me back up and I'll open this in actual Linux stuff because DOSBox lets you do that and at this point I'll take whatever so let's head over to bot so this is just a copy of the netcat code with some modifications there's no bot here yet and we have TCP live and TCP include, and they're basically ripped from the uh, actual MTCP code. So at some point I was just ripping out like, um, do I have an if zero around here? Yeah, I ripped out get app value because that seemed to be just dead code and I wasn't using it and just other things like that. Um, that did marginal code improvements, but most of it was me ripping out a lot of the netcat stuff in the actual uh, bot.cpp thing to see if it gets to get it working. Like uh, I removed command line parsing. Um, support for a few different modes. That's okay though. So, it fits in 64k, but last stream it was crashing due to interrupt BS. Um, so I want to take you on a detour to my my open Whatcom lifestyle. It's a, it's a choice I've made and it's not one I like. So let's see. Let's just write test.c, and this is an open Whatcom thing, so let's include, jeez, I'm not writing C++ here yet. Um, just write a quick function that says int made void, um, and let's make a far function um, that says far away. Um, and it's just going to print some stuff like hello there and return zero and then we're going to return far away now what cc I think I have wc yes okay so let's do wcl test.c And if we do dirt, we got test.exe. That works fine. Isn't that cool? Um, so let's delete test.exe, delete test.object. Um, now let's try outputting it as a com executable. Um, let's just quickly see how to do that. Um, I should be able to change the file format here. If not, I'll just build it and link it separately. Linker options. Create a DOS real node program. Let's do that. Although, it might be BCL equals DOS actually. No, let's try Okay, let's try dos uh, test.com. Still works. 
Now, this is interesting to me because it shouldn't really work. I suspect this is to do with compile optimization, but, or um, inlining. So let's make this a little more complex. Let's say we have a function pointer. Um, it would be int far away. No way, it would be int pointer void equals far away. And then we call the pointer. And let's try compiling that. Dear God, my function pointer worked. Now you'll see we get this little error, segment relocation at 355. Let's also compile it as an exe real quick. Now let's run the exe, test.exe. Nice. Test.com crashes. It actually kills DOSBox. And you're thinking, well, it could be a DOSBox bug, right? It's not. I installed FreeDOS. I finally got it installed by installing FreeDOS 1.2. Uh, 1.3's petitioning thing seems broken. But if you want to run FreeDOS in a VM, let me just see if I can find the folder. This is the script I eventually came up with. Wow, that looks, that looks terrible. Do we have like an edit thing? Open with other application. I would like to open it with Plimmer. Thank you. Um, so yes, R386, 486, eight megabytes. I have control grab, that's fine. Device IDE equals zero. Um, index FD12 full, so that's for USB, since I'm installing it from a USB image. Um, and if you want to do networking in FreeDOS in QMU, you want to use this line. And if you want to choose what to boot from, use this line. So that's actually fairly easy to set up, and under the hood it does use Slurp still. So, as you can see, we get the same unhandled interrupt called 6, spam. So you're like, hmm, what's happening here? So let's head back over and let's look at some of the assembly. Um, let me just quickly check what args we have. we we'll just use... Um, what is it more for this or PG? I think I have PG installed. So let's disassemble the test executable. Or maybe it was more. File not in L or cough or man. That's correct. So let's open it up in a debug instead and see how that goes. So it's a very simple um, program. Let's see if we can figure out where main is. We might have to compile with debugging uh, information. Uh, but let's just step through it. Are we going to get to main? Um, let's just quickly recompile it. Um, what was it? I don't quite remember what the extra arg was, but I'll do that in a sec. So that creates the exe, test.exe. Alright, so we have our function here. Let's open up the assembler. So you'll see something interesting here. You step through it, that's the stack check there. It pushes it. So at this point, we're setting the uh, file point of void. So if we actually open up our CPU registers, um, sorry, stack, over here, it's just pushing some stuff onto the stack. So it's pushing. Um, 
I believe, yes, so as you can see, the code segment here is 15 EB, and the data segment is different, but since we're pointing to code, it's going to be in the code segment. So it pushes 10, which must be the offset. So if we scroll up here, you can see um, B. So around here is where the function starts, around this call, I guess. So it pushes that pointer, and it's a far pointer. So it puts the, as you can see, 10, which is the offset in the code, but it also points the code segment, which is 15 EB. So then it calls it and it works. So I don't know what I just pressed there, but I'm gonna close it. So let's do, I don't know if BCL is even the right option, but we'll see. Yes, okay, so we have the com executable here and let's load that up and hope it has debugging stuff built into it. It does. So let's open up CP registers and let's open up the assembly. And you'll see something interesting. So it has the um, offset as 32C there, which is, yes, where the actual function is but it has the segment as a zero. So effectively, it's now going to call a function that's actually in the interrupt vector table. So at zero, zero, zero segment, offset 32C. And that will obviously kill DOSBox because that is bad code. That's just jumping to NOPS, I, I believe. So let's quit out of that and let's look at the actual assembly. So let's um, compile test.c and we should get test.obj and let's disassemble it. So we have our far away function here. Um, so yes, it calls printf. Then we have our main function. Now let's go down a bit. As you can see here, it moves it to the offset. It moves offset and it moves segment far away into there. And so the linker has to fill this in. So when you link it, it then changes this code here to be where the function is actually located in the final executable, because you're going to be mashing together a ton of objects, files and moving code around. However, it, the linker does not know what segment the program is going to be loaded at by DOS. So it's just going to leave that as zero and uh, kill itself, I guess. Um, but when it loads an executable file, it actually contains code and information at the start to fill that in with the segment at runtime. So it modifies that code at runtime when it loads the actual executable into memory to add the proper segment. So you're probably thinking, oh no, can we not have com files? Well, let's have a look here at the object file here. So uh, it sets the segment, it moves it. But can we actually just like fix up the segment on it at runtime ourselves if we know that it's actually code that we have in that segment and we know where the code segment is at runtime? Um, yeah, we can actually. So let's open up test.c and let's say something like, let's a quickly open. Let's quickly open the reference manual. Um, it should be in C guide. Um, FP off.
Okay, so we can make a new function pointer actually. So let's do this and let's do make function uh, far pointer. And we're going to do um, code segment and far pointer offset of our existing pointer. In fact, we can just actually delete that because it's just going to refer to the code anyway. Um, now we need to get this CS from somewhere. And we're actually going to load up the segment uh, registers. Segread. It uses segread, so it's not in that document, which means it's probably in a CLIP. Segread. This is some good music. I can get behind it. Seg read. So I probably need to include I86 fat. So struct S regs, then we read um, stuff into the struct. So let's do struct S regs, S regs, um, seg read, S regs. And then we're going to do S regs dot code segment. So let's make that again. Yes, so I need to include Okay, this music's legit gone from like a five to a seven. Still an error, that's to be expected, because I didn't have any errors early on the stream. So let's see, what did I do here? That looks fine. Um, I might have to actually read the error. One thing I am enjoying about DOS programming is that it's putting all its, what com at least, is putting all its errors in a separate file. So you can go back and read it is something I don't have the, uh, I don't know, thought to do in Unix. Okay, so I include i86.h, we get our struct sregs, sregs, uh, line 12, it really doesn't like that. So let's search up S regs. It might be because I'm putting code in the definition. So let's go back. Struct S regs S. Uh, it could be that I've actually called it something that it shouldn't. So let's do that as well. Um, so let's try that. I might have been calling it a reserved name or something like that. No, missing that. A brace. A little, con a little confused. So we have our segment registers and we read it and we make a pointer with a custom code segment offset. FP offset. Ah, so it's FP off. Sorry. So we read the existing code segment, then we combine it with um, a far pointer. So let's have a look at the assembly for that. We're going to actually load this up in the debugger. 
and look at the assembly. And as you can see, um, it reads in the segment registers. Um, let's see what it does here. This is a little confusing, but this is on the stack, so let's just walk through it. Um, sorry, data stack. So it moves 32C, which is yeah. So we're at 351, so that's likely where the code uh, for the faraway pointer is in memory. Neat. Um, then it moves that looks like the far part of the segment stuff that we just read into AX then it moves AX uh, into the register of the far pointer now you're probably thinking this code looks really weird because it uses stack stuff. And I'm like, I know right, but don't worry. I got this, I'll show you in a minute. But uh, let's just confirm that this works. Doesn't crash and we get the hello there. So we've created a com file that has um, working far register point, uh, far pointers. So let's uh, disassemble it and have a look at what's going on. So at main, it pushes the base pointer, allocates space on the stack. Okay, calls this seg read. Nice. Okay, so as you can see there, it adds the offset and whatever it read using segread. And you can also see that we're not getting any um, linker errors. Now I'm actually just going to show you what I've done. Instead of this um, SREG stuff, we're going to have our own little function that says pointer equals fix up far pointer far away. And then we're gonna have a function that does the actual register stuff. So let's do, we're gonna have to type def this, type def. Um, ink uh, pointer far funk void so far funk fix up far um, and far funk and then it'll take in the, the register and the segment It'll fix up the segment according to where we are now. It'll have a new far func that it will return. And new equals make fp s.cs fp off far, uh, sorry, in func. I'll have to call it something different. And we might actually just return that like that. And so then we can write um, fix up far, far away, like that. No prototype, that's right, I removed i86.x uh, 
Now you see we now have this segment relocation thing, and that's because the compiler couldn't optimize out the uh, assembly part. Because um, even though we have a fix up far thing there, it's now going to put the actual um, far pointer on the stack with its offset and its segment, and it's going to fix it up, and then it's going to call it. And so that's how we get far pointers in far pointers to code into <coughs> com executables. Now there's another case um, where let's say we have an interrupt. Sorry. Wow. We don't have G in this, I forgot. So let's say we have an interrupt. Um, interrupts are always far, according to Whatcom. So let's say int interrupt, and we say my interrupt, void. Um, and we say, let's say we have a global variable here, like, hmm. Hello there. And let's say we're gonna print that, I don't know, for a while. I don't know how long. Um, and we're gonna set that to be a DOS interrupt. So let's just say we've done that. Now, fix up far doesn't help us here. Well, it does because we can run fix up far and we can use that to set the interrupt using a far pointer. So, I might just actually do that. Um, let's see. Let's hook an interrupt and say. Hmm, what's an interrupter hook? We have to use set back for this. Uh, DOS set back timer. Yeah. Uh, what do I need? DOS.h for that. Righto. So we're going to make a program that sets an interrupt on the timer and then waits a little bit. Uh, and then when it when it hits the timer it's going to stop so dos will have to call the timer and the timer will trigger it to stop so we're going to have um, a bool here named stop equals false uh, that's a double negative so let's do run equals true and at the start of the program we'll say dos set vect 1C. I believe it's 1C. Um, and then we're going to do fix up far. My interrupt. And then we do while running. Um, let's just run the hold instruction. Uh, wait, no. The proper thing is to give back the time slice, but we're not going to do that. Let's just do a busy loop. That's fine here. Um, yeah, just do nothing there. And then we're going to set it to the previous vector. So let's actually see previous. And then we're going to do... Void. Interrupt previous void equals dos get back zero times one c so let's actually do this as an exe first and not a com file so then you'll know what I'm talking about so we don't need any fixing up 
This is probably what I should have started with. And just ignore all this here. Let's make that a comment so it actually kind of looks like it's being ignored. Yep, so we have our interrupt here. Um, stopping program due to interrupt. And running is false. And then it returns. Um, previous. So let's see how that goes. Oh, we need to return something. Turn one. Do we run out of music? No, it's not done yet. And up here, yes. So what this program should do as an executable is hook into the timer and it should stop itself based on the timer, even though it's in a busy loop. Okay, we don't have true. Uh, let's do true is one, false zero, um, and bool with int. Unsigned long. I see. Let me just remove the DOS part and we'll see if that helps. No prototype for DOS get backed. I may have to link with some library, but let's just DOS set backed, um, DOS get backed. So this code, it looks like it should be running fine. And I do pull in DOS related stuff, but I may have to set the system to be DOS. Um, no, that seems to have just kind of worked. I guess interrupts return a value, so let's... Oh, it doesn't, so let's just avoid it. Okay, so we have a DOS executable, and that would be test.exe, and we stopped the program due to an interrupt. Nice! So if we make it a com... This is similar to the TCP thing I had before. So we have two segment relocations. And if we run it, um, it's just going to kill DOSBox. And this is the exact problem I was having last stream. And if you're confused because I'm bad at explaining, I'll just re-explain it now that I have an actual example. Um, so let's open up uh, bot.com here. But not. Oh no, it's not bot.com, it's test.com. And we do window and we look at the assembly at main. It pushes an interrupt handler, it sets it to 00032C. And it sets an interrupt handler to a garbage address. And then in the actual interrupt handler itself, it sets the data segment to 0000. zero, zero, zero. So I'll show you the implications of that in a second. But um, let's just do v toast.c and let's add the fix up. So the first thing we're going to do is fix up the pointer to set the interrupt. So let's do that. Uh, 
policy. Fix up our uh, smash. Okay, yes, that is. Source conversion, target conversion is in. Type mismatch. That's not good. I'm just going to quickly look at this. Okay, I see what I've done wrong. I believe. Actually, no, I don't. Fix up far. Oh, I didn't set the actual value here. So it thinks it's an int. That's strange, but makes sense. So that fixes up setting the interrupt because we now have a far function pointer. So we can actually run, let's see, bot.com, sorry, test.com, but it still breaks. What's, uh, what's up with that, eh? Like, Obviously the code's running, but something weird is going on. And that's because, I'm not sure if, the, uh, can Wapcom do that? Let's just do, set a break there and let's run. Okay, no, sorry, wrong location. We want to set a break at the interrupt. Okay, so we've arrived at the interrupt. Everything seems good, but we're not printing anything. Um, in fact, it's actually crashed already, which is a bit strange. Um, so I'll just give you a spoiler alert on this. Um, let's disassemble it again. If we look at the um, interrupt here, at the start of an interrupt, it has to push all the registers because it might be called from somewhere else, another program. And then it has to set up the data segment because we use segment registers. And so logically you want to set it to the actual data of your program, but we don't know that at link time. We only know it at runtime because the data part is decided based on where the program is loaded. So in practice, um, see how it says dgroup const, then it says offset dgroup, so just ignore the const part. dgroup is our data segment at um, runtime, so it sets that to the segment and it sets that to the offset, but the offset is going to be 0, 0, 0, 0. And this is a bit tricky because we don't have a pointer here. It just sets it to zero, 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 and that wrecks havoc because it starts reading from the interrupt table when it tries to set things. So what can we do? Well, what if we just um, load the segment registers and set data segment equals CS and write the segment registers back. And we can say that's called um, void fix up data segment. And let's just put those there. So at the start of that, we will do fix up data segment and we will uh, compile that now. Segwrite. So segwrite was not the correct thing. So it might be segset. Yes, I believe it is segset. Nope. Segread. 
try and find that again. Say greed. Um, do we not have a way to set the registers? Okay, so I'm actually going to be a tricky, tricky boy. And instead of having a C function, we're just going to write some assembly. So we're going to move... Um, we're just going to push AX for no particular reason. We probably don't even need to do that, um, but I'm just being safe here. And we're going to put the code segment in it because that's where our data segment is too. We're in a tiny, pro tiny com program and data segment is set to code segment. And then we're going to move that to the um, data segment. And then let's compile that. Invalid instruction. CSX. Invalid instruction operands. Ah, uh, there we go. You can't move segment to segment. You have to use an intermediate like AX. Um, which apparently I'm not understanding at the moment. That should work. Um, move AX. Perhaps it has to be BX. Oh, no, I forgot to put the pop there. My bad. I'm a dummy. Okay, so let's look at the um let's go through the debugger and look at the assembly so at main it loads the bad um function pointer and it runs fix up far and we get a good function pointer to the interrupt and then it sets that as the interrupt vector then when the interrupt vector runs um here we go. It loads it up, it sets the data segment to 0000, but then our code pops in here and it sets the data segment to the code segment. I'm not sure why there's two of those. Um, that's a bug. That would have actually destroyed DOSBox if I ran it, I believe. Let's just quickly look at what happened there um, yes yeah, so this should be AX but you get the point it sets uh, the data segment to the code segment so let's run it now and it works isn't that great we've got interrupts working and we've got far pointers working in a com executable and so that's been basically an hour of explanation uh, for the code I'm about to show you because I've just done that for our bot code. So if we head on over to DOSC, dev, bot, um, let's open up the bot file. And you can see we have Fint DS fixup, which is a far interrupt DS fixup, which is, let's see, the same thing as this code here. And that runs at the start of all our interrupts now, including ones in MTCP. So if we go to the packet driver here and we find an interrupt, um, interrupt receiver, I've just shoved it at the top there at the top of basically interrupt. This includes the timer too. 
um, Fint DS fix up. That just goes at the top of interrupts now and that fixes the interrupts. Um, and if we head back to bot, you can see when we set the handlers, we now use Fint FP fix up. And I missed it there. I don't know why, because I was tired. And now with that, um, that is the equivalent of our fix up file function here, which sets the segment um, like that. And I've been using that also in the source code for MTCP. So as you can see, when it sets the vector here, it sets up the handler. Um, including the segment for here. That's a bit of a egregious example, but that's just how it be sometimes, you know? There should probably be a space there, actually. Um, and the way I've implemented it is kind of lazy. Um, I've just shoved it in, oops, the types file here. Um, and as you can see, I've got some if stuff here because I was testing with an exe. But really, this is the code here. Type def interrupt fin func. Um, fix up function is just this assembly code. And I'll explain that now actually. So we have these C functions here. But what if what if we didn't want that? What if we just wanted um, just inline assembly because it has been annoying having to call um, a separate function just to fix things up. So let's put this here and let's just trash this. So fix up far. We're going to use pragma aux fix up far equals and then we're just going to do mod bxcs palm xbx value a xbx so that'll be our new um, fix up far and let's compile that and see how that goes so it will no longer have to call a function it will just do inline assembly So as you can see here, same thing, but if we switch to the assembly mode, um, if we look back here, we actually just have one extra instruction instead of a whole function call. So this line here, um, move AX, yep, move BX, yep. Um, move the code segment to BX, yep. And then these two are just to call setback. So it's actually just this single extra instruction now that we're using some assembly code there. And it's easier for me to write. I'll quickly explain what's happening here. Pragma aux fix up far. And then you write your assembly there. You write a bunch of assembly instructions, but I've just got one there. And we set palm as the parameter. And since it's a far, far pointer, we're just going to have it in two registers, AX and BX. So it comes in as AXBX, and we send it out as AXBX. And our actual function just moves CS into BX, which is the far portion. And what com is like, oh yeah, let's just inline that. Um, the second one is a little more tricky. Um, we have Another function, um, let's just call it fix up um, data segment. I have better names now that I'm doing it a second time. Okay, fint fp just means far interrupt. 
and yes, I namespaced it by putting fin underneath it so things wouldn't break. And it's only for interrupts. Um, so we're going to add another function here. And it's going to be a void function. And it's just going to run the same code we had here. Fix up the S. Push AX, move AX, CS, move DS, AX, pop AX. And yeah, that's literally it. Oops. So instead of calling that code, it now just runs those instructions. And it works. So that's how we get far interrupts with um, com executables. And that took way too long to think about. I got an alert that Hatnix is hosting me. Thanks, Hatnix. Hey, Sir Dialot. Hey, Daisy Chain Cosplay. Hey, Hatnix. I just realized I typed in the wrong chat thing, so I didn't see it. There we go. I now have proper chat stuff. Sorry if I missed you, Sir Dialot. I just didn't see the chat. I had everything fixed up but I missed the chat in my IRC client. I said, I said join Twitch 2 instead of join Jukia 2. So I guess I'll have to apologize later for that. Blame Daisy. Oh, Hatnix, why you got the C drive everywhere? You don't have to do that. Um, I could probably actually just optimize that to be uh, move like that but that's just dangerous okay so I have all that explained the good old DOS prompt you love the good old DOS prompt it's it is certainly old I'll give you that So if we head on over to bot and we run wmake and um, you ignore all the warnings because you don't want to really care about warnings. Warnings are, they're just warnings. But in our case, all these segment relocations, I've gone through each of them and I have fixed them up at runtime. So it doesn't matter. It is fine. And so now if we look at the code here it goes to 10.2.100 that IP which is hijacked by slurp and it sends it to my IRC server which is I'm old enough to remember DOS games just being called games yeah but there were other like before that, wasn't there like um, a whole bunch of 16-bit computers and 8-bit computers? Although, I suppose they were just call games then. Yeah. So let's open up Wireshark and see what happens when I connect the bot. Oh, the other thing I forgot to mention is that in order to fit this in 64K, um, I did have to like really um, change the configuration, like I set the max sockets to 2, the max transfer buffers to, to 20, um, killed UDP DNS pinging, um, I only have 4 packet buffers, 3 ARP entries, that might be a problem in actual practice but I don't think so, I disabled IP fragmentation, I think that if I put that back on that would actually kill things so that might be a problem um, and that's about it I've left all the tracing in I believe so 
this has been my nightmare. So if we have our local capture thing, let's just do port 6667. Um, TCP dot port. Oh, it might be dest port. I remember how confused I was when games came out that needed a Windows, says Hatnix. Yeah. I don't remember that, because that didn't exist in my life. Daisy says, we had a terminal that connected to the server at my dad's job before we had a computer, but I think that was DOS too. No, I wouldn't. I don't think that would be DOS. DOS is not a multitasking system, unless it's a multitasking DOS, which was a thing. But again, that would be hell because it's, you know, you don't want to have unprotected memory just shared between everyone. You've got to use the, you got to use protection. Okay, so if we do bot.com, which I've affectionately named bot1.com, look, it connects. Now you're thinking, wow, you did it. Um, I don't know why it's not showing up here. It should show up here. Oh, that's right. I didn't connect capture from loopback. So let's go back here. Close without saving. We go to loop back and we start that. Could not resolve your host name. So this is the standard stuff. Like if I connect to it um, locally, just like a normal person would connect to IOC using Netcat. Um, and then we do Nick uh, Jukia 4 and then we do priv message Jukia 3 hi I don't know what's register I don't know what the register command is help okay so as you can see we have a few problems with my understanding of IRC I was very young then like three, five, orb, something. You know what? I read that as orb, like you're a three to five year old orb. So as you can see here, um, I just sent a whole bunch of IRC stuff just using netcat. So we have nick, we have response, which is error. Uh, that might be to someone else. That's not to me. Um, that actually does seem like something that should be registration timeout. So that should probably have been sent to this, but I didn't get it, which is another problem. Uh, Prove message to Q3. So the thing that is the problem with Netcat here is that the line, uh, the input is not cooked. Oh, here we go, I think. Yes, the line input is not cooked in DOS. Um, let me just fix the music again. There, OG format. If you don't OG, then get out of my house. So, what does line input not being cooked mean, you may ask? Well, um, it just means that it sends every character. So like if I do hello, um, you can see that it has just sent a bunch of data. No, that's not the right data. Uh, I'm so confused. Oh, it might have closed the link on this actually. Oh god, did DOSBox die? It died! Oh no! I mean, I can figure out why. Um, but I'll, I'll fix it, I'll fix it in a bit. Uh, but let's just go to bot1.com. So let's go here. Get the response notice. Now let's try typing something like Nick. Oh. And 
it crashed. Why is that? Um, I don't know. I think I messed something up. Um, I'll have to have a look at it in a second. Request N. So it didn't cook the line and allow me to just send Nick, sends each letter. The first terminal I used was green on black and today I prefer green on black. I wonder if there is a connection. Yeah. I don't like green on black. That just hurts my eyes. Green is like the worst color. It was a mistake. The human eye sees too much green. Um, so right now we're getting a crash. We're getting a uh, good old freeze due to an interrupt issue. And you're probably laughing and thinking, green is your favorite color, says Daisy. Is it? It's a pretty cool color to have as your favorite. Is it like uh, that? I don't think that's a creative color. Um, so we have some interrupt being called. Green than pink. Yeah, I can respect that. We have an interrupt being called, and that's just killing, killing us. Now, I'm not 100% sure what's going on, but I have a feeling it's to do with the timer. Um, so, what I'm going to do is trash that. Okay, we're not going to call any old timers. This is DOS, I own it. If anyone else is running timers, then it's probably... I don't know. They don't deserve to have their code run. Okay, so let's try that now. I forget how to do stuff with DOS. Yeah. I wish, I wish that was my life. Okay, so we do have like a reproducible interrupt error here, which I haven't been able to produce before. So this is fairly interesting. Um, as a wise person once said, may you live in interesting times. It has been many years. How many? Two. <laughs> Too many years? Eh? Like 26? Yeah. That's, a, that's more years than I've been around. Okay, so something is happening here and I don't understand what and it's making me feel very concerned about the future of this project. Um, and it seems to be to do with interrupts and it seems to be based on the size of the packet. So if we just keep hitting space here. Let's try and see what happens. Yep, so uh, packet process single there crashes things. So, oh, what? Why? What's happened? Where are we? Huh? It didn't kill DOSBox? We're at 1.5 dB in the standard library. Um, is our stack smashed? No, the stack pointer looks okay. Get next token utils. And it gets... What is happening? Why? I think it might be the timer. But let's just continue. I like Hatnix's green, 
It was just a quick pick, half blind. The color code is 6AF222. Yeah, it's pretty good. Ah, oh, you got the Daisy Hat Nix emotes. Nice. Um, wait, where am I? It's something I suppose I'm going to say when I'm old. Just to freak people out. But, in all seriousness... 0418, I think that's probably the packet driver. Um, I rent. What the actual hay is going on? So the first thing I'm going to do here is just start disabling interrupts. Really, really work things out, you know? Um, so, let's just not set the interrupt here. And we'll see if that fixes it. Maybe. I don't know. I have, I'm, I am at my breaking point. Not really. Um, does that fix it? Um, no, that actually kills it because it turns out it needs that timer. I think this colour kind of looks good on you. Uh, I I just checked IRC and I saw Daisy C1 Hatnix and I said earlier good emoji but I forgot which one it was and I looked in my actual chat and I saw it was the Hatnix with the tongue and I feel really weird now. Where did you get that tongue? Uh, GIF? Is it a GIF or is it like a WebM? I don't know what people use. But I, I refuse to believe you could get something so high quality like that as a GIF. It's a GIF? Hopefully I get it from Hatnix. What? The, the, the color? The, the tongue? Um, okay, so packet process single. Ah uh, yes, the tongue. Hatnix does have a tongue, and I think he'll be streaming later. Um, I don't know when. I actually, I I can know this. I have the power to know this. It's <sighs> I I don't have the power. I forgot his the uh, website. I hope to get to know his tongue a lot better. What's, what's there to know more about a tongue? I'm sorry you can't shout out your channel, Hatnix. I, as you can see, my bot is... It, it is not happening. 2 hour 14 minutes. Yeah. Hey, Trio House. What's up? Yeah, I'll be around if you stream, Hatnix. I'll probably eat breakfast around then. Uh, I can't wait to... Once I've finished this water, I need to start filtering, fi uh, filtering water. Hi, Sam. But the drought is not good for water quality. I can tell you that. It should be in TCP ink. Um, so once I fix this, I'm probably going to just do a inventory of how much space I can I actually have for code and data after all of this. Packet.h. Where's the process packet? Packet process single sleep. Is it sleep? Is sleep killing me? Is that what it is? Sleep calls. It's calling DOS idle. Um, it's just... If deaf, sleep calls. So it's, um, if you're ever doing DOS programming, please use the idle interrupt. 
pink is my second favourite colour, but I don't think it looks good on me in here. Um, I don't know. My IRC client just shows you as, as blue. And IRC is the true way to experience Twitch chat. On ancient hardware without power management and multitasking, there is no point in making a sleep call. I don't know why I'm reading that. I've read that. So, I have shamefully, shamefully, um, been behind on Daisy streams, and I've been dodging out Nix's streams because I've had, like, other stuff to do. So, have I missed any lore? Did Ellie the Elf get sent to a gulag or something? What's, what has been happening? I have a feeling this sleep thing is the problem. It seems interrupt related. And interrupts cause interrupt problems, I suppose. I don't know. Who knows? I you whispered me the first condensed video? Nice! I'll have to go check my twitch.tv website thing. It'd be cool if you like DM'd it to me on Mastodon, but that might be asking a bit much. Wow, that sounded sarcastic, but it's not. Um, the Twitch website just hates my computer so much. Oh, there's so much to not like about the Twitch website, and... Having to give my phone number for Twitch's broken two-factor authentication stuff was not something to like about it. I don't... God, no. I could never rebuild Twitch. Release time slice is not being required. Using DOS? No! It sounds like something I might actually do. But I don't want to do. I don't know why I'm here anymore. Where am I using release time slice? DB stack, DOS plus basic. Oh. That's so tempting because I know I'm complaining about all DOS's limitations here, but this is because I'm running 16-bit code. If I just use an extender, then all my problems are gone. I can do SSL, I can read like megabytes of memory. It's cool. No problem at all. But, uh, yeah, it's tempting. Um, let's see. Argrep. I learned about Argrep the other day. My life has never been better. Oh, so it's in utils.cpp. If Julia gets 50 subs, will he rebuild Twitch? Oh. Dear God, no. I couldn't. I mean, I literally couldn't. I'd get banned from Twitch for, uh... Probably for reverse engineering. Hey, Dr. Frankenstein 90, how's your bot going? Is it going better than mine? I've been missing your streams. Watch his streams if you want to know about how to make a bot in C++ using some kind of functional framework? Are you still using that? You have like, um, observer pattern going. Where it's reactive and callbacks everywhere and it's cool and... It, yeah, that's cool. Last time I tried to use C++, like modern features in GCC, GCC crashed, so... Okay, does this fix the issue? Yeah? Yeah. Oh no. This is different. It there's no errors, but it seems to be different. Um 
I've made GCC crash too. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing here. I don't know what I'm doing with my life. Something bad's happened. Um, I'm just gonna uncomment sleep calls properly. Because doing this is silly and maybe that'll help. Um, where is it? It's in global.config. GCC is one of those weird things where you either love it or you hate it. And your son wants to vacation to Area 51? Oh my god, no. Dear god, no. Why? And I've found bugs in GCC where it rejected valid code in new features. Yeah, that's kind of where I um, had the bugs too. Oh. Every time there's a bug in software, I just get this cold sweat that there's going to be like 10, like 10 more bugs come out of that code because people are going to poke around it and fuzz test it. I'm still like, I'm really jarred from all the Spectre stuff still. <sighs> DOS doesn't have Spectre. If you want to buy a DOS computer, your uh, your programs will guaranteed not to be uh, Spectred. That's pretty cool, I guess. Okay, you gonna work now? Okay, so he crashes there, which is weird, and I don't understand why. And better than Telnet? Uh, Telnet has lines cooking, so it means it actually is going to work. Okay, so it's not a... It's not a sleep issue. So something else must be um, killing it. Uh, so I have to kind of look anywhere that has a far pointer. If they're doing far pointer math, then I'm kind of screwed. Oh snap, did I still comment out the timer? Um, no I didn't probably actually chain that in case the packet driver is using that although it doesn't seem like it did so I don't know I don't know anymore it looks suspiciously like some kind of memory leak yep In your case, the network layer of your bot was broken, it would just stop sending anything after the first burst of messages because I forgot a uh, bang operator when checking if it was idle last stream. Oh, not operator. Oh damn, that's why you'd never use double negatives in your code. Assuming you were like, if idle, but then you put a knot in front of it. This is kind of working? What? Why is it working under the debugger? Um, let's think. Debugger means code executes slower. Is this some kind of race condition? Um, no, it's, uh, it's just working fine. Um, so, option, oh no, it's crashed now. Oh no, that's not crashing, that's me hitting Alt X. How did a young lad like yourself become interested in DOS, says Daisy Chain Cosplay. Um, I suppose because I like embedded programming. Resource constraints. 
I've been interested in single tasking computers just for the efficiency. Although it turns out Linux can pretty much do that. Like if you set the schedule uh, scheduler properly, you can basically run a single tasking system. Like you can just get rid of that preemptive scheduling fairly easily. I was reading about that last night. Full writing equals not write queue dot empty. Yep, see, you got hit by the du double negatives. Should be bull writing equals write queue dot full. Eh? That would have smoked you out. Um, so, I feel like. I ain't got no time for positives. Wow, that's depressing. <laughs> okay, um, I'm gonna need to open Wireshark for this. Because... Oh! Wait. I have a trace file! Don't I? Wow, I didn't tell anyone about this. Okay, so MTCP has a trace function. Um, so let's just run bot1.com. Um, so, works fine. Still working fine. Up, oh, it's frozen. Up, oh, it's crashed. But, let's check out the trace file. Yeah. Trace. So MTCP actually does have debugging and tracing and stuff. Um, so the first thing that kind of stands out at me is that state is... What happened here? Is that always like that? Yeah, I... I guess. Data length? Five six seven one four remote window. What? Data length. What? Okay. But it does seem like it's sending the right amount here. Bull is idle equals empty. Yeah. It'd be more like bull running equals something and then you'd like put the not in front of it so you'd read it as not running I guess source equals 0 0.2.100 that's really weird that it cuts off the 10 there but I'll take it that's probably something that I messed up okay so it connects receives Sending 55, dumping 55. Um, I cut out the dump code. Removing sent packets with secret sequence number less than that. Uh, that's weird stuff. So it seems like. the state changes here. Um, oldest unact. Is it because it's not acting it? Is it because I don't have enough packet buffers to act it? Um, I'm not sure. Daisy... Oh, let me look at the chat. Daisy minus tongue hat mix equals not love. Um, that just screws with my head. Um, I can't handle that. That. I'm not one for the Boolean operations. Okay. But one. Yeah. And I C K space J O O K I. A space H I T H E R E Alt X 
now. Let's see, has that crashed it? No. It exceeds 64 kilobytes. That's weird. That doesn't seem like it should be something that's exceeding it. But uh, it's not closing here, which is also weird. So let's use our... I, I don't want to say trump card anymore. Oh god, Hatnix, no! Daisy C... Sorry. Daisy plus Hatnix not equals to not heart. I know there's like some kind of uh, rewriting you can do with balloons. Like if... Some kind of algebraic... If um, one end is not... Like, uh, so there's an inverse way of writing it. Okay, so did you know DOSBox has a debugger if you build it from source? Isn't that sick? It's kind of weird, but it's also kind of cool. So let's see. Can we isolate this flow? Error. Oh! Okay, so, huh, it seems that it's always crashing when it closes the link, huh, that's good. You can also see the issue here, not love equals not Oh, my god. I've had to rewrite source code to not have such weird complicated balloons. Yeah, I was rewriting some kind of, uh... I was thinking I was rewriting a kernel patch for Linux, and I found that two statements were the same. Oh no, it was in uh, U-Boot. Yeah. Two statements uh, were the same, and I was like, that always evaluates to, to true. I don't know why you wrote it like that. Request a response error. So it sends the response, it acts it, and then it finishes it. And we acknowledge that it's finished. Could it be that this is an error in my code? Hmm. Could be possible. I'm not one to write errors into my code. But, I don't know. I'm just gonna spam that. Yay. I wanna go to Area 51 to try and find my real parents. How about we don't go to Area 51? That actually sounds like how you die. Let's not storm Area 51. Um. I'm just going to do some like shameless self-promotion and show that um, JPEG I made on Mastodon. Uh, Technics.d I would like to meet my mummy one day, it says Daisy Chain Cosplay. Um, I don't have the backstory for that. Did any of you see this? Is this... Is this a mistake? <laughs> uh, the best thing about this image is that it has everything. It's got slurp crashing, it's got compiler errors, and it's got the DOS box is not suited to run your non-gaming DOS applications at the top. 
Um, all of the problems that I've hit. Okay, so the time slicing is ruining my life. But right now I think the major bug is in the trace. Uh, not trace. The bot. Code. It's not handling um, disconnected packets properly. I believe. It's just uh, bailing. So we're going to have to find the part where it prints stuff to the uh, screen. If remote closed equals zero, again, that's a weird double negative. And that will be gone when I rewrite this. Um, so I assume it's not actually going to hit here. Um, let's use the debugger. Thanks, Daisy. It is a nice image. I made it with GIMP. Um, I don't know. There's, I think there's a fork of GIMP now called Glimpse, just to fix the name and some other stuff. So I'm, I'm all behind that. Um, go use Glimpse. Yeah, GIMP and Raw Therapy have been my tools. Pencil Sheep's pretty cool. I haven't used it because it's proprietary. I was going to say it in a weird way, but then I realized that might be like the verbal equivalent of putting parentheses around it. And then I thought, you know, that's probably a thing. Some people probably think proprietary software is the fault of a certain set of people. And I feel like I don't want to get into that because they're wrong and stupid. I have to use GIMP because I am one. Uh, I just can't get into... I think the hardest part of becoming a full leather GIMP is the leather part because leather really creeps me out. If they had synthetic leather GIMP suits, I'd, I guess I could understand. But I just don't like leather. Okay, debugger time. You can't believe Hatnex just says he's a GIMP. Yeah, no, it's, it's fine, don't worry. Not code overview. Uh, the worst part about DOSBox's debugger is that you have to remember all of the debug commands. Um, Hey, Sir Dialot. Sorry I missed your high at the start. I need to get like a... <laughs> I didn't ignore you. I had my ISC channel open to Twitch 2 instead of Jukia 2. I don't know why. <laughs> Okay, this is why... Uh, this is trouble. This is... this is... double trouble. I'm okay with people getting GIMP to change its name. It's like... A low effort change that would make people happy. Is that controversial? people are put off by it based on the name.
that's really all there is to it. So this is a busy loop here. Still better than cheese sandwich. Um, because GIMP has sexual connotations if you Google it, I guess. And if you want to put that into like a work or educational setting, it might be a bit weird. Although I'm sure if I search it up, it's going to be like, oh, you mean GIMP, you Linux loser? What are you, weird? Yeah, there we go. Does it do that with private browsing? It is just name, but I can understand it. I don't think it's a big deal. I guess if you really like the name, it's fine. But it just bothers me a little bit. Like, I don't want to get... I don't want to get political on my stream, <coughs> but... You know, it's just low effort to uh, include a build flag or something. Just call it like GNU Glimp. That rolls off the tongue quite easy. So we're in a busy loop here. I'm a rogue now. Yeah, I've gone... I thought people complained about it because it's a term for disabled people. Is it? I feel... I feel like that's a good reason to complain about it, but also... I don't know. I, I submitted a patch to Vim so they could change some documentation so it doesn't say the N-word. Like, not the, the actual N-word, but like, something that reminds you of it. So I'm just, I'm kind of that person that's like, okay, low effort change makes people happy. I guess there's a lot of people kind of generalize it to say like, if we change this, then we're gonna have to change everything else. But that's like really slippery and I don't find it. I dislike this political correctness stuff. Mm. I don't know, it seems, again, it's more like an effort thing for me. You as a disabled person has no problem with the name GIMP for a software. Yeah. Like, I'm not saying anyone has to be offended by words. I'm just saying that, you know, it's okay to be offended by words and that maybe we should be, like, low-key uh, helpful to those people that are, if it's, like, a very trivial thing. Like, is it really such a bad thing to just let people compile GIMP with a build flag that says, oh, show it as glimpse. Here. Yeah, GIMP might have been redefined that way. That's a pretty good thing, I guess. I've just had like so many bad experiences with weird open source things where you have these low effort changes that would make people happy and it's like we have to oppose them because something because if we change one small thing, then therefore changing big things is going to happen. Okay, how am I going to debug this? I'm going to have to step through it, but it's a network thing, which is a headache. So I might have to bisect it. 
and that's a headache. So let's actually use our brains for this. Um, I just say this coming from a place where I had some really sore experiences with open source projects and the fundamental problems came from people who were like, if we change this small thing, um, then it's going to lead to changing bigger things and eventually everything will be changed. I doubt switching away from the master-slave terminology helped a single slave. No, it probably didn't. Okay, where are we going to? But I don't think people were saying that it was going to help slaves. Um, packet process single, services connection. Uh, is it happening there? I'll have to set breakpoints there. We're changing the name of the song Master of the Puppets Help Puppets. Probably not. But I don't think anyone said these things. So I guess that's just my beef. The whole uh, jump to conclusions about uh, intent. Welcome to my weirdly political stream. Um, how's America doing? That seems like a good place to start. I have a lot of opinions about America as a non-American. And I feel like I have, I have exactly the experience and knowledge to form opinions on the topic. So packet process signal. It's not dying there. I don't think. There are certain rights every puppet deserves, that's true. Heap is corrupted. Also, I dislike the methods which seem to be for someone's sense of political correctness by social media shitstorms. Um, yeah. Heap is corrupted. So is this an issue of mem- yeah, it's, it's, an, it's always an issue of memory. Okay. Why would the heap be corrupted? Why? Why would you do this? Why would the heat be corrupted? I don't understand. I'm oh. <laughs> Seek when slash acknowledge errors is equal to one. Um. Okay. I'm actually just gonna. We've allocated all the memory here. I think it is funny when white affluent women get so into the political correct stuff that people they pretend to defend wouldn't even know what they're talking about. Yeah. Um, let's see. Let's just try and show where the top of the heap is. Actually, no, I can just read memory for that. Hang on a second. Um, let's look at our memory map. Actually, no, I should be looking for anywhere Malloc is called, shouldn't I? Hatnix, to be honest, I think it depends on the context. Yeah, that's my main thing. There's a lot of overgeneralizations. It'd be good if we could have nuanced discussion about things. Um, let's see, R grab Malloc. Where are you malloking stuff? Um, packet? Temp. That sounds like a problem. Um, my program should not have malloking in it. Or... 
I mean, no, it, Malik should be fine. It, it just shouldn't be corrupting the heat. How does it determine that? How does it determine that the heap is corrupted? It's not the size of your packet, it's how you use it. Yeah. The heap is corrupted. Wow. You wrote a nice replacement for the heap, but you can use it instead of Malik and Free. Okay. Is this open source? I'm starting to feel like this is just libc being lib trash. Um. Hey fishy poos, what's up? Daisy's here. This is my dream. Okay, tiny code. Files. No license at all. Okay. Oof. Um. What com seems to be an appropriate name? Yeah, but also the source code's available. All right. Replace the I/O library. The file IO library takes use of the heap and the math library? What? No! I don't like that at all. Oh. Am I gonna have to replace libc? I don't want to replace libc. Okay, I guess I'm replacing libc. Um. Does anyone have a 16-bit libc they can throw my way? Thanks. Um, that'd be good. Just any kind of... Uh, I mean, it shouldn't... It should not be corrupting the heap. At all. Let's go to our Whatcom source code trash file and do some grabbing. Maybe one of the small ones. Yeah, like muzzle or something. Um, our grab heap is corrupt. How does it decide if the heap is corrupt? Okay, so that only happens in like the debugger. Um, I don't know why they spelt it with one R there, but I guess you just don't have to do that anymore. Okay, printf heap is corrupt s and heap is corrupted. Um, that's not the error I got, but they might have changed it because this is version. 1.8 So let's just say the end of the corrupt has got the end of the heap is corrupt um, That's all commented out, but that's fine Heap bad pointer So it walks the heap. Okay. So we really shouldn't be using the heap at all. In this situation, we should definitely be using static allocation. Oh. 
Oh. Can we change this to use static allocation? Do I have the power to do that? Um, that would certainly make life easier. Let's, let's have a look. Um, I grab Malak. So let's see. Packet. Just look for Malak here. Buffer in it. Um, packet buffer land. It doesn't seem like it should be doing that. Okay, so that seems actually fairly trivial. So let's see. Um, fake, Malik, and let's just do that. Um, let's comment that out. Fake Malik. Um, Malik. Uh, free. Buffer stop. If buffer man pointer free. Buffer free. No, I don't want to. I want to actually like, okay. Used for deallocating memory. Um, that's not set anywhere. That seems weird, but I will just ignore that. My son called me from his tablet and the caller ID said my ex's name. That's weird. That is, um, not okay. Can we do, like, see stuff like that to... Ah, oh, that killed. Um, can we do, like, with this version of C... Maybe it's, I don't know how it works. I think it might be in your phone. Or maybe it's registered. I'm not sure. Cannot sign a point of value to an arithmetic item. Okay, so that's packet buffers times packet buffer length. Let's have a quick look. Packet buffers 4 times 15 or 14. 6056, gotcha. Cannot sign a pointer value to an arithmetic item. Um, oh, I see. That makes sense. So, Ideally, that would still cause things to work. And not crash. Okay, so let's just try and do that with the rest of the program and just get rid of this malloc nonsense. Um, so where else do we use malloc? Did that help, at least? Maybe? I'm not sure. Um, so, IP and TCP, it seems. And TCP sockman. Um, this, did this fix it? Alright. 
IP. Malik. Camp size. Init for reassembly. Um, allocate memory for big packets. The assumption is that all allocated memory is in the same segment, if not our code spot these packets. Um, I don't think we use that. No, we don't use fragmentation. Um. Oh, is that? That seems to have worked, but then it just kills itself. Okay. Um, is that somewhat reproducible? No. Um, where else do we have Malik? So we have no Malik in the packet. Um, PC stock manager and utils. Where are we using Malik here? Um, I guess we're not. PCB sock manager. Okay, Malik me. Um, Max sockets times size of TCP socket. So what's max sockets? Um, TCP manager. That's a, that gets implemented. That gets sent. Uh, not sent. That gets set when we init stuff over here. TCP socket ring size. Let's play this music again. Uh, TCP socket ring size. So two times size of TCP packet. Okay, gotcha. Um, TCP sockets. Sockets. Two. Um, all sockets. Sockets memory pointer. There we go. Um, you don't need to free anything anymore. So, no more Malik there. Um, UDP. Okay, so it's probably in TCP where we're going to have the most trouble. Because Boyo is TCP big. Malik temp size. That's the buffer. So what's temp going to be? Okay, so it's the memory there. Um, okay. Xmit buffers I. So, what is Xmit buffers? Yikes from me there. TCP max X mit buffs. So what's this might be where the troubles um being set. So if it's allocating more uh, XMIT buffs, let's just say, how many does it allocate by default? XMIT buffs P. I'll just say two. Um, 
Okay, buff size. Um. Then pointer equals end. Oh, we can probably just wipe that too. Buffer pool. Um, probably gonna do that. Allocated X mix buffers. What is that set to? That's set to zero. Um, and then this is all just ignored. Okay, whatever. Oh no, that's set to two. Okay, I gotcha. Um, so we set that to two, and then we set that to x mit buffers. <sighs> okay. Um, let's actually just think about this for a bit. Um, that sets it to zero. Xmit buffers P should be two all the time. So let's just quickly set that to two. Nice, 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 nice. Um, You know, I might actually have to change that to... Where is it? Max exit. I can just do yeah I'll just I want to make that so it's not a pointer how does it trace the hash what hash what did I do Um, call ID, I don't know, it's probably a telco thing. Let's search it up real quick, because I'm curious now. Transmits a caller's telephone number to the call parties thing. So I suppose it's to do with your account at the um, at your telephone provider sent to the called party by the telephone switch dear god Carry in some instances has to access the information from a third party database. Uh, that's weird. Okay, so apparently it's just hell. And uh, call ID is hell. And phones are hell. So maybe you should just stop using your phone. Would that solve things? Uh. 
stick it to phones. Yeah. Me and my reluctant phone hate. Okay, so we're not using temp. Um, what do we use the mem pointer here for? I'll look at that in a second. However, we don't need to allocate these. And that should be a dot. So buffer pool, and we're also looking at xmit buffers mem pointer. Is that just used to deallocate? Okay. Nice. Um, so how does it allocate more? Probably down here somewhere, right? Set receive buffer. What? That's a ring buffer. Um, no thanks. So does it? How does it allocate more? Does it not do that? Okay, so it just doesn't allocate more. Okay. That's a little strange. Um, and let's see. Receive buffer. Do we call that? New socket. Set receive buffer. That's listen code though. We're not using receive. Do we actually ever need set receive buffer? Do I call it in my bot? No, okay. Um, go away then. I don't ever need that. Okay, so does this do anything useful. Does removing Malik solve any of my problems? Elapsed ticks. That should be there. Sounds like I misplaced something. Oh. No reference to symbol. So that's line two five twenty four. Current ticks, elapsed ticks. Um, it kind of looks like it's there, though. Oh, wait. Um, x mid buffers. Let's do that. Am I, is this all the code for this?
Ah, oh, it might be in tcp.h. Okay. So there's some extra garbage here that I haven't looked at in the headers. Um, my bad. It's not on me, right? Trickster copy. That's a bit weird, but okay. TCP buffer. Free MX buffers. So what did I comment out here? Allocated man pointer. So we don't need that anymore. Get XMIT buff. Free XMIT buffers. So we never do any more allocation. Okay, does that help? That's a lot of errors. Conversion of return time is impossible. 196. Gotcha. Oops. Return XMIT buff. Interesting. And that returns it to the pool. Um, so let's just do that and... Okay, so that's a problem there. Um, let's just say there's no free buffers, ever. Is that what I want? Probably not. Do I return the buffer here? Um, get an exit buff. But it probably does return XMIT buff. Jesus Christ. Okay, undo all that. Undo all that. Um, there. TCP buffer. Um, big buff that and we're just gonna say temp equals what's buff size oh buff size is bigger okay temp equals big buff So buff size equals TCP buffer plus that. Uh, what 
is TC FIFA? What is the size of that? Ah, oh, jeez. Jeez, Rick. MSS to advertise. So I can... That's weird. Set that to be 10.24. Um, and let's say... Um, size of big buff. Um, greater than temp size. Big buff. Otherwise, no. There, we have a fake Malik now. And that's a weird way to do it, but hopefully it's a good way. No reference to sync, signal, elapsed tickets. That's right, I changed the header file too. I guess. TCP sock M. That would be at 103. All sockets. trash the heap less. Possibly. Okay.
Okay, so if we go back here. So, the heap is getting corrupt. I uh, don't know why. Shouldn't be, but I guess it just is. Is that how computers work? I don't think so. Yeah, this music, big mood. Make the stack smaller too. I don't think it's going to be allocating much on the stack. Also allocates the ring buffer. Oh no, it's only for receiving. About to create TCP buffers. Okay, let's just read the trace then real quick. One, two, two, four. Gotcha. So I'll just set that to one, two, two, four. my code that's smashing the heap I might just have to end up forking MTCP. It's not really under development. I'm making a lot of weird changes to it. Um, okay, so back to TCP. One, two, two, four. If size of big buff greater than ten size. Okay, so that should be greater than. that Daisy did a uh, cool thing on her Mastodon 
you're doing the um I don't know, is it the metal sign? With the two fingers? That's cool. You are very social, it's awesome. My friend Coz did manage to get OBS set up, which is great. Using Intel for encoding, using his Intel GPU for encoding the recording and his AMD one for encoding the stream. Okay, can I crash? Crash me. Please, DOS. Okay, so it's not crashing. Is this good? It seems good. It seems like... It seems like good, but it also might not be good because it just crashed now. Something weird is happening. It, I would guess it's when it's setting timer old tick handler. Hmm. Because that would be what is happening all the time. So let's just not set the old timer tick handler. And let's just see what that does. There's one thing I've learned is that the timer would just spam you with issues and it's the timer's fault. I might have to add some canaries to these buffers. Because it's in the heap now, but... Oh, jeez. Yeah, that's a little bit what I was worried about. Um, it might now be overriding code if it's overflowing. Um, that's not good. Hmm. Let's see. Big buff. Let's add eight uh, that should be initialized with zero right so if we add eight to it and then we do the same for where are we any other buffers we have then we should be able to tell if they're overflowing. It shouldn't be overflowing, but it looks like it is. So. Who knows? It could be nothing. So all sockets, set it to three sockets. Um, DC sock manager. 
TCP Max sockets, so that should be two. Eight there. Three there. Ah, pack it two. So Fake Malik six oh five six. Um plus eight. Just throw a plus eight there. Um and then we can check to see if it's overridden. Those zero disconnect is kind of a canary. Because no one should ever write there. And by using the memory map we can kind of figure out where things should be. So let's see. I want to read the map there. Oh, that interrupts. Ah, oh, that's feels really off, something seems really off about that, and I can't quite place why. Damn it! Is that it? No, that's not it. Old control brake handler, it's not it. Oh, I can do that? That's a good idea. I might do that. Uh, use a struct instead of just a raw buffer. Okay, so let's see. Um, data segment 624. Okay, gotcha. Okay. So let's see. Um, unhandled interrupt called six. So let's see. Six two four. Um, six two four. So let's get the memory map. And we're going to look for. Would it be an ARP? Is there a malloc and ARP? No, that just uses a simple table. Um, IP. Fake malloc. So BE. D678. Okay, might have some alignment, but at least we'll see what's up. Where's my DOS box? Debugger.
No, that has quite enough buffer there. Okay, tcp.cpp. Um, where's the big buff? DB78. You're overflowing there. Uh, it's this terminal. Um, D Is that DB78? That's the X move episode. That hasn't overflowed. That's good. Um, TCP sockets. DBB4. Let's assume that's fine. What have we got on the heap? Uh, 9F76. Let's have a snoop around. What's on the hip? 9F76, is that it? 9F46. Um, and that says that the heap is at A0E8, A0E8. What? Four six. Okay, so. Um, DS A0 E8 or is it E8? No, it would be E8 A0. Hmm. And that would be all the heap. Oh. Oh, S. Big S. I see problems. What is that? the heap end. Stuff. 
ape check. Ape walk. Ape enabled. Ape manager. Hmm. So let's head on back to that Whatcom code. And try and find what is it called? It's in the C library. Um and Malik. So this seems to be the same code. You have small data. There's a lot of extra stuff here. Including debugging for heap allocation. Okay. So it walks the heap. So heap. And what would heap be set to at the start? Okay, so what would mini heap forever be at? Is Heap okay something that this has?
If it's overriding the heap, then it must be breaking the environment. Let's try it. up your host name. people that use printf really. So let's see if we have an incoming packet. adding queues packets. No, I want to look for incoming packets. Where it prints in. Copy it to the file write buffer. Oh no. That's not nearly enough. And this is where I went wrong. Okay. I think that's the issue. I'm corrupting the heat because I'm an idiot. Oh, that makes so much sense. Okay. Let's see if this works. Oh my god, is it gonna work? I'll just leave that for a second. We have spooky, is this going to work music? such an idiot, idiot reason to spend two hours debugging, but it's looking like the issue is because I was copying data into a buffer that was too small because I made it smaller earlier because I was trying to make the code smaller. So making read buffer size means it can actually copy stuff into the buffer correctly. Yes, it all works now. Um, that's a good fitting end for not only this stream, but my life. Just kidding. <sighs> so does this mean it works? It's all good? I can smash it with input 
I can quit out like that. That's good. Um, so if I get rid of the Malik in this... Nice. So yes, by getting rid of Malik... Um, I'm not sure if that's something I should do or not. The advantage of getting rid of Malik is that at compile time I can figure out if it's uh, if I have enough space left for my program. But I suppose I could also just check that out at runtime. Let's see. EO9C. So how many bytes would I have theoretically left? So EO9C plus 1024. Um, and then 0 times F, 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 F. That could be enough for a program. I feel like I've calculated that wrong. Not 309C, EO9C. 1D63. So how many bytes is that? Seven, seven bytes. So that's, nearly 8 kilobytes. No, wait. I think so. Yeah. Okay. I should be able to fit a bot in 4K, I believe. Yeah. Alright everyone, I think that's about it. It's been three hours and I've made great progress today. I don't think there's any more bot uh <laughs> any more bots in the bugs. Any more bugs in the um TCP handling. So next stream will basically be me cleaning up the code and starting to write the bot itself, hopefully. That's exciting. Um, fairly optimistic on this. All right, thanks for hanging around. See you whenever I stream next, I guess. Bye bye